Welcome to this new video. I'm Ricardo, a musicus practicus, and my job is to help you to learn Renaissance music theory and to discover all the secrets about early music, composition, and more things. In this video, we talk about the trick to do the counterpoint four note against one without errors. Many students of uh, conservatoires and uh, musical academies, when they study counterpoint, have a lot of difficulties about the third species of counterpoint because uh, sometimes they are not able to, to compose melody that are correct at, and, uh, at the same time with a grateful line. For that, in this video I am going to show you a trick to compose perfectly a counterpoint four note against one. Before starting, I remember you to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell if you want to see more videos about uh, counterpoint, early music and other things. Support me on my Patreon, subscribing a membership. And if you subscribe to the Semi Brevis membership, you can download all the PDFs of all my videos and the PDFs of this video with all the passages that I'm going to explain you. So don't talk anymore and let's start. What is four note against one counterpoint? The counterpoint four notes against one is a composition technique that consists in writing four notes that usually are semi minimas against one note that usually is a semi brevis. In this way, as you can see, I have here in the lower voice a semi brevis and in the upper voice four semi minimas. In the, other, in the second example, I have four semi minimas in the lower voice and one semi brevis in the upper voice. The basic rule of this kind of counterpoint says that the first and the third note of the fourth note groups must be consonants. So, here in red I write a C that means consonants. In the group of four notes, we have the first, the second, the third, and the fourth notes. The first and the third must be consonants. The second and the fourth can be consonants, but they can also be dissonance. I'm talking about the interval between the note and the semi brevis that can be below or above, depending on if I'm writing a counterpoint below or above a line of a semi brevis. Let's recap the consonances. The harmonic consonances are the unison, the fifth and the, the eighth. They are the perfect consonances and the other consonances are the third, major or minor and the sixth major or minor. These are the imperfect consonances because they can be major or minor. The dissonances are the second, the fourth, the seventh, the nine and, and all the, the augmented and diminished uh, consonances, for example, the fifth the diminished fifth is a dissonance. The sharp fifth, the augmented fifth, is a dissonance. For example, the diminished third is a dissonance. Ok, now let's see some passages that we can do in this exercise. These are three examples of four note against one counterpoint when the counterpoint is in the upper voice. Now let's check the intervals on the first and the third notes. First example, that is a unison, so it is consonance, okay. The third is a third, that is consonance, okay. The second note is a dissonance because it is a second, so it's okay. And the fourth note is a fourth, it is a dissonance, so it is okay. Remember that on the first and on the third uh, note we must have a consonance. And here we have a sixth that is a consonance. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let's see the second example. Here, I have a tenth that is consonants. Here, on the third note, I have an eighth that is a consonant. And here, I have a, a third that is a consonant. Let's check the other notes. This is a ninth that is a dissonance, so it is okay because it is on the second note. This is a seventh and it is okay because it is on the fourth note. And now let's check the third example. Here we have a sixth that is a consonant. Here I have a third that is a consonant. And here we have a sixth that is a consonant. So, as you can see, at this place, in, um, on the second note of uh, these four note groups, I have a consonant, a fifth. But it is okay, because the second and the, th and the fourth note can be dissonances or consonances. I can choose. So, in this case, I have a consonant, but on the fourth note, I have a fourth it is a, also an augmented third, fourth, so it is a dissonance, but it is okay, because it is on the fourth note of a fourth note group. These are three examples of a four note against one counterpoint, where the counterpoint is in the lower voice. So, let's do the same. First example. The first interval is a third, consonants, okay? The third note is a fifth, that is consonants, okay? The second note is a fourth, that is dissonance, but it is okay? And the fourth note, it is a sixth, that is consonance, okay? And the, in, the, in the new bar, I have, we have a, a tenth, that is okay. A tenth is an octave plus a third. In the second example, we have uh, on the first note a fifth that is consonance, okay. On the third note, we have an octave that is consonance, so okay. And in the new bar, we have a sixth that is consonance, so it is okay. In, on the second note, we have a sixth that is consonance, but the second and the fourth note can be consonances or dissonances. And on the fourth note, we have a seventh that is a dissonance, so it is okay. Now let's check the last exercise, the last example. The first note is, a, is an, oct an octave that is consonant, so it is okay. The third note is a sixth that is a consonant, so it is okay. And in the new bar we have a third that is a consonant, so it is okay. Now let's consider the, th uh, the second and the fourth notes that are a seventh that is dissonance, but it is okay and the fifth, that is consonants, that is okay. Now, let's consider this group and let's check the intervals. So, the first is a sixth, that is okay. The second is a fifth, that is okay. The third note is a fourth and it is a dissonance and the fourth note is a third, that is a consonant. And then we have another third, that is a consonant. So, uh, this can be an error, a mistake, but it is like an exception. In this bar, we have, we have three consonances and only one dissonance. So, uh, we can do this uh, passage. As you can imagine, it can be allowed, uh, especially from the movement, that is a stepwise movement, and it is graceful. So, this is like an exception. Another type of exception is the nota cambiata, that is like a switch of the last two notes of a fourth notes group. Look at this example and let's check the number. Eighth, seventh, fifth, and sixth, and sixth. As you can see, in, the, in, this, uh, in this example, we have a, a dissonance that leaps to another 
note a dissonance can't live a dissonance can only be reached and lived only by stepwise motion This is the nota cambiata because the last two notes of this group is composed of two notes that are changed. We have here the B and here the C. The verb cambiare means to change. Now let's consider this example and let's check the numbers. 3 that is consonance, 4 that is dissonance, 6 that is consonance and 5 that is consonance and in the new bar a third. As you can see we have the same problem, a dissonance that leaps to another note. So this is also a nota cambiata but in the lower voice. In fact the last two notes are in the opposite disposition. As I've just said, it is not allowed to leap from a dissonance, except for the nota cambiata. Let's check the intervals. 3, 4, 6, and 5th, and 3rd. So, this is a leap. This is a dissonance that leaps, so it is not allowed. Now let's check the intervals of this example. Third, sixth, seventh, third, and sixth. In this point, we have a seventh, a dissonance that leaps to another note. This is a mistake, a big error. About the nota cambiata, be careful because uh, the, the melody must follow this pattern. So it, there is a, uh, a second down. Here there is the dissonance that leaps a third down. And then we have a consonance that is a second up the dissonance. This is the same structure of this passage, second down. This is the dissonance that leaps a third down. And then the dissonance to a consonance, that is in this case a fifth, that go on on a sixth, that is consonance. This is the pattern of the nota cambiata. So the nota cambiata um, we can change uh, the notes. This is in an E, but it can also be an F, a G, and, and other notes. But the intervals usually are these. And the, mo the most important is the pattern of the melody, of the counterpoint, must follow this, figure, this figuration. It is not allowed also leaping to a dissonance, not only from, like in the following examples. Let's check the numbers. 3, consonants, 4, dissonance, 5th consonants, and 2nd dissonance. As you can see, here from a consonance I leap to a dissonance. This is not allowed because the dissonance must be reached and lived in the same direction with stepwise step-wise motion. Or also in the contrary. Let's check the numbers. Three consonants, fourth dissonance, fifth consonants, second dissonance and three consonants. The same here, I can't go on this dissonance with a leap. I must use the stepwise motion, so this is a mistake for the same reason.
In other words, to make this more simple, it is possible only leaping from or to a consonance, and a dissonance must be reached and lived only with stepwise motion, following so the direction of the melody. Ok, perfect. Now let's discover the trick to do a perfect counterpoint four note against one. Before, let's choose a, a melody that is a, a cantus firmus, a melody composed of only semi brevis. This is our cantus firmus, that is giut, ere, si fa, bimi, ere and giut. I use solmization for uh, an historical approach to this exercise. If you don't know solmization and if you want to learn solmization like a Renaissance music course, check in the description my solmization super course, that is the first solmization course at world that teach you the solmization in the historical way, with the historical approach. How can we compose a counterpoint four note against one? The trick consists in writing before a counterpoint that is one note against one note, that is like a skeleton of our exercise. Because this counterpoint is not a, counterpo a real counterpoint one note against one, but it is only a skeleton of our final exercise, we can also do some passages and uh, some movements that in the real counterpoint one note against one note uh, are forbidden. And here I go on an octave with direct motion. These two movements are forbidden in a, in a normal one note against one note counterpoint. But it is only, this is only a skeleton. But in this case this melody is only the structure of our final result. So now what we have to do, before we have uh, to check all the intervals, so 8, 3, 6, 6, 10 and 8. And now we only have to add diminutions. Diminution are the, diminutions are the groups of 4 notes. For example, this is a possibility. Now let's check the numbers. As you can see, the first, the first note of each bar is the note of the one note against one note counterpoint I wrote as our structure. Do you remember the melodic leap of major sixth? In this exercise it doesn't exist anymore, because this leap has been reached from the top. And also in this case the direct octaves are not anymore, because the, in this case the melody goes down and the octave is reached with the contrary motion. So the trick consists in build, compose a one note against one note structure and then to apply mm, diminution and figures. There is another question that can be very important. Which movement of full group notes we can use because a four note group exists in a different, in a big number of combinations. So on the PDF that is uh, annexed to this video, there is a table with all the groups you can use in the Renaissance style and with the groups that are not usually used in the Renaissance style. Nice, for this video is all. Go on my Patreon page and subscribe to the Cerebrevis membership. 
In this way, you can support me and help me to make more videos and more contents. And you can also download the PDF with all the passages and explanation of this video. You can use with practice this kind of counterpoint. For this video is all. If you enjoyed it, leave me your gamma out and see you in the next one. Bye.